Hello everyone and welcome back to your personalized incontinence training channel. Now today we are going to talk about bladder training. And the first thing you need to know about bladder training is the fact that... What? What are you doing? I'm in the middle of recording a video. I know, but you're in the wrong channel. What do you mean the wrong channel? Well, this is the channel where you talk about testing the Tesla and reporting on your findings and you definitely do not talk about incontinence. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm absolutely sure. Whoopsie. Now, get back on track before you lose all your subscribers real quickly. Okay, okay, I got this. All right, just saying, I'm going. Yeah, thanks. So today we are going to talk about the BMS again. In my previous video, I actually uh, explained to you how to calibrate your BMS to get some additional mileage uh, on the display. So not really in your battery, but on the display range. Uh, and also to avoid getting stranded if you go really low. Now, next to that, I wanted to see uh, what it does with my own battery pack. And of course, I wanted to judge the degradation on my pack uh, by driving it down from 100% to close to 0%. So in a sense, that is kind of bladder training anyway. So the first thing that I needed to do was actually um, drive the battery down to below 5%. So I did that to about 15 kilometers or uh, roughly three, three to four percent. And then I needed to let it rest for a couple of hours. Now this is always dangerous because at very low state of charge, then uh, also you might have the risk of the 12 volt um, not being recharged anymore. So. Make sure that you don't do un any unnecessary things. So sentry mode doesn't work in the first place, but I also pulled out any USB device that I had, including my hotspot, which is normally not powered on, but anyways. Um, and of course, uh, limiting all the uh, energy consumption that you can have by not looking at the app during the few hours. Now, when I did that after like three hours, I think, uh, that I let it go like that. Uh, I only had nine kilometers left on uh, the battery. The next thing I needed to do, of course, was to charge the car. And I timed it to charge at 11 kilowatts or 16 amps in my case uh, on three phase 230. And yeah, I timed it so that it would be done by the time that I was awake again. But to my surprise, when I woke up and I looked at the car, it only charged 422 kilometers, which is 98%, even though the charge was set to 100%. So that was a bit of a surprise for me that it did not charge all the way. But then again, that is that whole topping off thing at uh, near the 100% mark. So what I did is I drove around for about 15 kilometers or about 3% that I needed to go down. And then I charge it again to 100% and this time it did charge to 100% and the 100% came down to 434, 435 uh, briefly but as soon as I got into the car it jumped immediately to 434 kilometers. Now given the fact that I started with 436 kilometers of range when I charged it fully the last time I did it before we went on holiday, um, my battery uh, or my BMS was calibrated. So this confirms also that if you regularly charge between 20, 15, 20 and 90 percent, um, that is a big enough charge to keep the BMS calibrated. And if you do that regularly, you don't need to do this whole exercise of calibrating your BMS. Now in the new app, you can see not the percentages anymore. Only if you drag, you can see the lines of the percentages, but uh, you see the estimated range that you will charge to, uh, which is new, but it's also jumping all over the place. Uh, while charging, I've seen it go from 410 to 440 kilometers, but in the end, it, uh, yeah, it narrowed down to 435. 
So yeah, don't go by a single number if you look at the app and say, well, I will be having so much. No, it is still only an estimate and that estimate is apparently constantly being adjusted. So the numbers are all over the place and the percentage is the only thing that is actually uh, correct for what you set as the state of charge. Now, another thing that is really interesting is the fact that I use the Scan My Tesla app to check on the BMS as well. And what the BMS was telling me before I started the calibration is that I was supposed to be getting 88.1 kilowatt hours nominal full pack, which means with the uh, five kilowatt hour energy buffer uh, subtracted, I would only have um, 83.1 kilowatt hours left in my battery. Now I did drive my car when we did the, the very first video that I did was the world record hypermiling that I did with a friend of mine. And we managed to get 97.2 kilowatt hours out of the battery, but that included that energy buffer. Now, if I remember correctly, then the P100 D pack was supposed to have 98.6 kilowatt hours of usable energy including that energy buffer. Uh, so we were really close to that. But uh, that would mean that I have a huge degradation already of more than 10%. Now, when I did the calibration and I did my test, then afterwards I also um, went back to the Scanma Tesla app and there I saw that we had 87.1% kilowatt hours with the same five kilowatt hour buffer. So only 82 kilowatt hours would be the real number for my battery pack right now that is usable. Now keep in mind that I have been supercharging a lot and over the past year or so in my new job, I have been using my car as a test car for very frequent charges like 50, 60 charging sessions a day uh, just to test our uh, charging stations. So uh, that will also probably affect the degradation of the battery and uh, yeah, the system in general, as it is not really intended for that use. Some interesting numbers here as well is the fact that I have a dedicated MID certified uh, power counter or consumption counter in uh, my uh, cabinet, uh, my fuse box basically, and uh, it measures what is going to the car. Uh, at the same time, I have a, a charging station that can give me the uh, amount of energy that has gone to the car actually. And then within the car, I can see how much I've actually charged. Now, looking in the car, I did charge about 84 kilowatt hours. Now, that's more than the nominal pack minus the energy buffer. So it was always already tapping into that energy buffer by going to 3%. So that means that buffer is not just for going below zero. So be careful if you are uh, actually trying to count on that. Now, if I go look at the numbers from the charging station, there it said I had charged uh, 90.52 kilowatt hours, um, whereas the car said 84 kilowatt hours. Um, so that's a uh, 92.8 efficiency. So about 93% efficiency of the charger itself. Um, now, if I go to the source and just see in my electrical cabinet what uh, it consumed there, then the number there is 92.43 kilowatt hours. So that is an efficiency of about 98% of the charger itself. So the onboard charger of Tesla is about 93% efficient and the uh, charger that we have uh, at the house here, that is again 98%. But it is turning out to be a big difference, right? Going from 92.43 kilowatt hours consumed in electricity from the house, but only 84 kilowatt hours actually reach the battery. So that is very interesting. And uh, if some of you are wondering what the degradation numbers are or the conversion numbers are, uh, the efficiency of the overall thing, then, well, it's about uh, a between 90 and 92% um, 
efficiency that you have. So about 10% energy losses between what you pull from the house and what you get into the car. And this was on a summer day or a summer night, I should say. So no real cooling necessary and no heating of the battery necessary. Otherwise, it will take that additional power as well from the grid. So yeah, that is the first part of what we needed to do. We needed to see how much energy can go into the battery. And if you calibrate the BMS, what difference does it make? So in my case, uh, there was no real difference in doing the calibration because I already uh, do the 20 to 90% charge on a very regular basis. So that keeps the BMS calibrated anyway. Scan my Tesla. It says I'm supposed to have like 87 uh, kilowatt hours after calibration, uh, including a five kilowatt hour energy buffer. And yeah, the only thing we need to do now is to figure out if that uh, is really the amount that I can get out of the battery pack.